Hello, so here's a video I've wanted to do for a while, um, one that's kind of cost me a bit too much really for what it is, but um, I had to come back to it. So the DP66 was the first proper Geiger counter I owned, um, and obviously apologies, I'm going to be filming this on my phone, the video won't be all that long because I've still got corona, but at this point it's basically just cold symptoms now, so it's just, you know, going to be waiting to see when my quarantine period ends, you know, when I stop registering on lateral flows, but so anyway... Um, the DP66 series is interesting, it's because it's Communist Poland's sort of own version of the DP5. So the DP5 was the Soviet sort of common Geiger counter, dose meter. Um, and the Polish um, and a couple of the other Warsaw client pack states, I think like Czechoslovakia, decided rather than just buying the Russian licenses, they'd make their own Geiger counters. So you have some quite interesting results. Now, in this video, I'm just going to give you a quick show of it, um, and then we, well, I'll do a longer video at some point when I'm feeling better. So your audio in this is a little speaker output. It's a two-prong one. If you're going to try and run modern 3.5mm speakers on there, you can get online conversions. Just don't pay like 20 quid for literally something that converts the two pins to one pin. But you can find them online, and then you can put you know a big chunky speaker on there and get a really nice clicking noise, because these do make a nice clicking noise. For all accounts and purposes, the Polish DP75 meter is probably better in every way than this one, except for the fact it doesn't click. So, but in terms of like backlight and, um, you know, radiation ranges and everything, um, it does everything this does, and it's in a bit of a smaller package. It's also got um, a decimeter charger there, so you put your DKP50s in, you twist that knob until you zero them, um, so that's just the decimeter pens. Right, so you have, with the switches, off, K, which is battery test, and then you can see, obviously, that's the light. And you can see when I turn the light on, it lowers the voltage going to the um, main circuits a bit. So it's, like, it's got one of the nice backlit screens, but this one isn't as strong as some of the other ones I've seen. So in the, we'll start at the lowest range and work forwards. So it does beta in the lowest three ranges, um, as well as gamma. But you're meant to take measurements differently. So gamma, 0 0.5 millirunken per hour, to up to 5 millirunken per hour, up to 50 millirunken per hour. And beta up to 10k, I assume that's counts per minute rather than counts per hour. Um, 100k counts per um, minute or a million counts per minute. Um, and yeah, the interesting thing of this, and then it obviously has, similar to the Soviet ones, the higher radiation ranges, where you can... Um, that's the only annoying thing. So you've got, you know, your um, half ronken per hour, five ronken per hour, 200 ronken per hour. And for the 200, you read the um, scale there, rather than the other scales. But on the other scales, I'm pretty sure you just read to that 5, as you would on the others. Um, but also, this one has got the beta sort of count mode on it as well. See at the top where it has the beta symbol, where it says goes to 10 and then has um, beta. Uh, so yeah, that, that's an interesting thing. Um, oh yeah, and it is counts per minute, look, because you can literally see it there. Uh, guess counts per minute by centimetre squared, centimetre cubed. Um, so anyway, let's demonstrate this as best I can. So the really cool thing of this, um, unlike the Soviet DP5s, is it actually has three Geiger Muller tubes in it. Um, so rather than it just having um, the SI, uh, what's it, the um, ST10 or whatever it's called, so it, it has still has the very common Soviet Geiger tube in it, but it uses two Polish like other tubes, a mid-range and a high-range tube, rather than it just simply being a... Um, you know, high-end Soviet tube, which is actually good because it means you have less dead zones in the radiation ranges. So this is actually better for picking up beta, actually, than um, the Soviet ones are. So um, let's get out our cursed sample. And you can probably already see that that might start registering on there. If I move that. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, glass is really good for insulating strontium-90, as I've said before. So let me just put my camera down a second. Well, hopefully not stopping the video. And let me get this sample out and onto the thing so it's safe. Um, and now let's have a look at the needle fly. So just to show you, I've got the probe at the moment in the... Um, that's basically the little bit of beta's being let through. Yeah, because if you look there, there's... I don't know how easy it is to see on here, but you have a one bit that's BX10 with a small hole. So beta times 10 you're reading. The other one, which is... Beta equals one, or yeah, times one, which is when most of the beta shield is opened. So if it, well, I rotate it towards the white dot, don't I? I think oh, it's gone around the wrong way now again. It's quite hard to do this while holding the camera at the same time. 
But basically, yeah, you can have that fully open like that for beta times one. You can have it partially open a little small hole for beta times ten. Or I think that's still technically open there, isn't it? I can't actually see it. And oh, no, it's not. Okay, so yeah, you swivel that round to that one. And then when it's fully closed, it's gamma only. So let me just pop this down again a second and get this. So this is on now beta times one. And you can see it's responding to that source. And the nice thing about the Polish meters, like the Soviet ones, they've got the quick reset button. So you can do that. Go back in for taking a sample again. So, okay, let's go up to the 50 milli Röntgen per hour um, tube section, or which is up to, I think, 1 million counts per minute on beta. As you can see, we can absolutely flood this, but it still keeps running. So now what we can do is, if I pop that down again, I said this is the disadvantage when I've not got the camcorder set up, but it's better for short videos, um, is if I set the probe to the beta X10 position, so that now looks like that, the X10. So now we put the probe around this way. And we're still managing to saturate now because but that's because it's a DP2 control source. But um, that does at least mean you can take higher beta readings with this than um, you can with a lot of other Geiger Miller counters of the same type. It might actually stop in that range now. Obviously, the thing is with this is once you go above a certain range, it won't use the um, beta tubes anymore. So let's say if I set it to 0 0.5 Röntgen per hour, that's going to only be in gamma-only mode basically now, like with DP2s. So if I put that there, look, I'm not getting a reading, even though it's blatantly would have given me a reading now. It's just the, how these work. So yeah, there's a quick video on it. So again, I do really like the DP2, um, you know, I've said because it sounds really cool. But yeah, I'll do a proper video on it with my camcorder once, um, you know, I'm feeling better from Corona. But... The only problem with DP66s and DP75s are a lot more fragile than the Soviet meters, even though they're technically, I guess, more impressive from an electrical standpoint. So these sort of bits where the probes connect with the wires, that's the place where the wires can shear inside quite easily. You'll see a lot of broken ones where just bits have come out here. Um, the emitters tend to break as well, and the actual display screens on them. But yeah, there you go. It's a really cool old counter from the Cold War. I really wanted to get another one because my first counter I had was a DP66M. Um, so interestingly, this is a, a DP66 made in 1971, which is actually pretty late for um, a regular 66. But I may, guess they maybe kept this model more as a scientific survey type one because it has got the beta calculator on there. But yeah, there we go.